What's up, guys? Ian here, coach of your Ladner Lantern, bringing you guys our Hive Season 7 Kakuna Draft Breakdown. I decided I will be recording this season, uh, along with MWPA Season 8. Uh, I haven't recorded a full season in either of these leagues, and then I've got Unseal coming back, too. So, um, I just kind of wanted to get back into recording. It's a little bit relaxing for me, and it helps me take my mind off of other things and focus a little bit more on my builds, which is something that I haven't been doing as much lately. Uh, I only have one loss in Gen 8 so far, which is probably going to change in this season uh, just because of some of the competition. So let's maybe talk about some of the other coaches in Kakuna. First of all, there's Lapis, who I know is really good. Mio, uh, Ben, Shiny Sableye, also really good players. Chess, who's really good. Dougal, who's really good. Leo, who's really good, who beat us in UPA finals. Uh, Arf, who's good. Jackanev, who's amazing. Uh, Seton, who's really good. Mega Butterfree, who's really good. Jace Link, who was in Mega Beedrill last season. Aaron, who we played in High Beedle Playoffs last season. Furfrau, uh, who's also really good. Ishan, who we played in UPA. And Shiny, who we've played in Red before. Um, so, a bunch of people that I'm relatively familiar with. Some people I haven't played before. Um, but it's really high competition. So, well, obviously, you'd expect that considering that I'm uploading a high video, but definitely uh, not entirely what I expected with my Kakuna experience. Um, I tended to struggle a little bit in Weedle. I didn't perform as best as I could in playoffs either in Weedle. So I'm a little bit nervous about how this is gonna go. I know that I'm probably around this skill level anyways, but uh, I'm definitely worried about demoting. <laughs> Being a bottom four team uh, demotes you back down to Weedle. So we gotta be careful about not doing that. Now, um, I haven't drafted in this league before and it's my first split tiers draft. So the way that split tiers work is we were given a thousand points to start the draft and then go <laughs> and it's like you have 11 mons pick what you need you still need a tier one a tier two two tier threes a tier four and a tier five and a mega um but you could choose from either of the split tiers there's a tier 1a that's the normal 180 points or a tier 1b that's a discounted 160 points which essentially means you either have 20 more points to spend on a tier 2 because tier 2a is actually 140 which is 20 points more expensive than a regular tier 2 tier 2b is a regular 120 points tier 3a is 100 points which is regular tier 3 or tier 3B is 80, which is a, um, a lower tier 3. Tier 4 only had one price point at 60, and then tier 5A was 40, and tier 5B was 20. So you could get a discounted pick in tier 3, tier 3B, tier 1B, uh, or tier 5B, which could help you either make a more expensive pick in tier 2A, or it gives you more free points to play with later. Um, and then in terms of megas, tier 1A mega cost you 20 points and would take that away. Tier 1B megas uh, were zero, flat zero. Tier 2A megas were uh, gave you 20 points. Tier 2B megas gave you 60 points for some reason. I guess the difference between tier 2A and tier 2B is fairly significant. I'm not sure about that jump though. Um, and then tier 3A megas give you 80 and there's only Mega Bennett in tier 3B mega. But it would give you 100 if you were choosing Mega Bennett. So coming into this draft, I had a pretty poor pick, if I remember correctly. It was something like 12th or 13th. No, maybe it was more like 11th, actually. Uh, it was pretty bad. It was a pretty bad pick. And pretty much everything that I wanted to try went before I could get it in the first round. So I wanted to try Mel Metal, and Mio took it a couple picks before me. So I kind of got a little bit screwed there, and I ended up having to go with something that I didn't really think was going to sit on the board as long as it did. Um, and it's actually Tapu Lele, which for some reason is in Tier 1B. I'm not sure that the terrain nerf necessarily makes Tapu Lele a 160 point mon. The terrain nerf minus hidden power. Uh, I, I don't actually think that makes it a Tier 1B mon. Uh, it's a little bit weaker to Scissor, of course, now. Without having hidden power, it can't hit that or like Fortress or anything. Um, but I think it's still pretty valuable. Um, I probably should be a tier 1A, to be honest, but that's okay. Uh, it, it's really hard to tier things for 64 coaches, um, all of different skill levels. So it's, yeah, uh, very, very hard to tier for that. But Tapu Lele, I thought, made a good start to this draft for me. Gave me a very offensive Psychic right off the bat. Gave me a Fairy right off the bat, which I was really looking to grab early. Because uh, just based on the tiers, I, I could see that it was going to be difficult to find a, a Fairy that I liked. 
Um, and I've never really used Lele. I had it in an Uber's season of Mount Silver once, but besides that, I haven't really touched it. Even like in telepathy form or anything like that. So this is Psychic Surge Lele, and it only cost me 160 points, filled my tier 1 slot. Um, just good Spidef Mon too, as well as a good special attacker. And Psychic Terrain is going to come into play with my next pick, which I sort of like grabbed super early just because I wasn't really sure what I wanted. I wanted to pair this with Garchomp really, really badly, but then Aaron sniped me uh, at the beginning of round two, which I should have expected, honestly. Like Garchomp's super high value with no hit power. I was honestly shocked it even made it that far, but I didn't think that I was going to get Lele plus Chomp if that had fallen. Uh, someone would have definitely taken Lele, so there's pretty much no way I was going to get both of those. So I ended up going with Hoopa Unbound, Mon that I'm reasonably comfortable with. It fills my tier 2 slot. It was a more expensive tier 2. It was a 140 point tier 2, but I paid less for my tier 1. So I, I basically paid the same amount of points for my tier 1 and tier 2 that I would in a normal tier draft. Because I took the more expensive tier 2, but the cheaper tier 1. Um, Hoopa is like pretty much the same as Apple Lele, but it functions really, really well in Psychic Terrain. Um, the thing for both of them is that they're both pretty weak to priority, especially physical priority. Um, but Hoopa is just such an amazing attacker. Like they're, they're both really amazing attackers, and then Hoopa in Psychic Terrain just is so, so scary. Like... Psychic Stab coming off of 160 or 170 attack is just absolutely nutty. So, uh, pretty good breaking core between the two of them. It doesn't do that much uh, in reality because um, besides, like, being able to hit Ghosts, I just doubled up on Psychic, and they're both, like, problems. I don't know. Uh, you know, Hoopa's really weak to Bug. Tapu Lele is not actually weak to Bug at all. Uh, Lele's weak to Ghost. Hoopa is not weak to ghost and neither of them are technically weak to dark so i don't have like a dark weakness or a ghost weakness necessarily building up or a bug weakness necessarily be building up because of the doubled up psychic types i think their secondary types complement each other actually really well in this sense um but having double psychics means i have zero utility on the team so far uh besides like both of them running trick room or something right but zero utility i don't have hazards i don't have removal I don't have, like, pivoting. There's no U-turning or anything on this team. So I was a little bit sketchy about that, but um, I, I think it's going to be a solid breaking pairing, which is going to help with the rest of the team significantly. Uh, round three, I dove down, and I took Duraludon. This was definitely a dive. I'm not going to lie. Was definitely a dive. This is actually my tier four. Uh, I thought the tier four Duraludon was actually pretty high value, so I went for it early. I wanted to get a Steel and a Dragon, and I wasn't sure where to go for that, because a lot of the uh, top tier Steels were going. Or I could rely on something like Bisharp. I didn't want to take Bronzong, because I have used Bronzong a lot, and I also didn't want to have a third Psychic type on the team already. So the options for like legitimate Steel types were pretty much gone, because Corviknight had already gone at this point too. I hate Skarmory with a passion. Ferrothorn was gone. Celesteel was gone. Excadrill was gone. Um, so I didn't really have a ton of options for actual Steel types. And I thought that this held a little bit of value for me. Uh, because it's a Steel type with rocks, first of all. And it's also a dragon. Now, I, you know, it's pretty much paper on the special side. And that's okay. It can be paper on the special side. Because Lele and Hoopa are both amazing on the specialty defensive side. Um, and Duraludon sort of patches up a physical weakness to an extent, especially for Hoopa. It's a really good U-turn resist for Hoopa. Uh, Rox is a big thing for me as well in terms of utility. It's slotted in between Hoopa and Lele in terms of speed tierings. And it was a tier 4, which I think personally is higher value. I would probably place Duraludon like it, either 20 or 40 points more expensive than 60. Um, just because of what it can do in draft, which is probably... It, it, it's kind of unproven to an extent right um you know there hasn't been enough draft games to sort of tier properly all of the new pokemon so this sort of being in tier four sparked an interest for me um i, I don't know whether that's just because i'm bad and better players just can't use this mod or something or that it's actually really horrible and that's it deserves to be in tier five but it with dialga's typing it's got a lot of defensive utility and I just really liked that it's not weak to fairy either. So um, it's a dragon that's not weak to fairy. And it completes a fairy dragon steel core with Lele there. So uh, I, I did dive for this. Not as far as for Frau, who took Vikable in tier 5 this round. 
But Vikavul should also not be in tier 5 now that it gets webs. There's just like no reason for Vikavul to be in tier 5 when it already had energy ball to hit ground types. So um, there were like a few things that are probably in, in suspicious places on the tier list that'll be changed for future seasons. Because uh, I saw a lot of stuff in tier 5 that I was like, why is this in tier 5 still? But uh, that's just because of learning about new moves and stuff like that. So in round four, I went and took Crobat, which is also probably a dive. Uh, this probably didn't need to go round four, but I wanted to grab a, uh, a tier three, which was a pivot. Uh, big thing for me being a pivot, and I wanted to grab some removal while I was at it. I'm not weak to rocks. In fact, I actually technically overall resist rocks before the Crobat. Um, but getting a little bit of removal was helpful. Picking up a t one of the required tier threes was helpful, and having a... Um, a pivot was really good for me. So a nice U-turner on the team. It's not super duper strong. I've used it before. Um, it's a pretty decent, just like offensive pivot, super fast bond, choice bander, nasty plotter, etc. Um, so I like it on the team, especially as a ground, uh, ground immunity for the Duraludon, helps out a lot. There's not really much more that I could talk about Crobat. Again, it's it was kind of a dive, but not as much of a dive as Duraludon, and I was really excited for Duraludon because it's a new Pokemon, and Crobat's an old Pokemon. So, I've sort of, like, worn down a few of my points here. I'm at 540. This wasn't the worst case for me, because uh, I filled a Tier 3, but it was a Tier 3A, so there you go. And I've pretty much paid what I would normally pay for Pokemon in the spots where they're going to be. Um, and from here, I was looking at a few things. I knew I needed a Fire, I knew I needed a fire type down the line. I had an idea of what I wanted my Mega to be, um, because I wanted to get points for my Mega. Like, everyone actually took... I, I didn't take it to your 1A Mega, but they actually all went. Um, and I didn't want any of them except for, like, Mega Scissor, which I knew was not going to fall to me, because it's broken in this in this meta. And then Tier 1B looked kind of eh, for the most part. Uh, like, I'm actually really surprised that Mega Lopini even got drafted. Um... Tier 2B looked pretty awful. Besides, like, Mega Houndoom, which I was looking at at one point, and that would give have given me more points, but I'm not sure I would have made use of those points anyways. So I was kind of looking at a Tier 2A Mega in particular. Um, but I think I actually end up taking... Yes, so I took Blastoise this round. And this is a Tier 4, so this is my first free pick, technically. But it gets Shell Smash... So I didn't really think that this should have been a tier 4. I actually think this is probably the steal of the entire draft. Um, uh, like, this is the same tier that Blastoise was in before it got Shell Smash. It should definitely be higher now that it has actual offensive pressure with Shell Smash. It, it just it baffles me that this was still in tier 4, so I grabbed it pretty much as soon as I could. Um, before people even noticed it there, I, I was just like, yeah, I'm taking this. So, this is my water on the team. I really, really, really like Blastoise. It gives me more removal. It can still be the defensive utility that I've used before. Or it could be a Shell Smasher, which is super threatening. Um, it, you know, it doesn't even have to be a special Smasher, because it's it does have decent physical coverage. It can be a physical Shell Smasher as well. So, a couple different options there. Opens up a little bit of a of more of a setup option on the team in where I was sort of more of a breaking uh, with other things. This can definitely be a good cleaner for the team, as well as something like Crobat could be as well. Uh, round six, I took Terrakion, which is another Mon that sort of fits the bill. It's another rocker for the team, which is great. Adds on to, Dura to Duraludon. Fills some typings that I didn't have. It lets me break through dark types a little bit better for something like Hoopa. Um, besides that, it, it doesn't offer... All too much with its typing, besides being a rock resist itself for the Crobat. Um, it, you know, I, I picked it for the rocks. I picked it for the setup. I think Terrakion is kind of underrated uh, to an extent where it shouldn't ever really be a top round pick. But if it's still there later, then it should probably be taken. Uh, it's, it's a giant threat. I like using this in 8 Mon, so I'm curious to see how it'll work out in 11 Mon. Um, it obviously lost access to Z-moves, which I think... Helps it a little bit, in a sense. Um, you know, I if this thing got Dragon Dance, it would be a total monster, because that's kind of what broke Pew, is that instead of having to run Rock Polish and Sword Dance, you got an extra coverage move. But it actually gets Mega Horn now, which is kind of fun. Uh, I didn't know that until after I drafted it, I think. But 
It does get Megahorn now, which means it has an easier time of breaking bulky psychics that it had to previously rely on X Scissor for. And I think the 40 base power upgrade for 15% move uh, mischance is definitely worth it in pretty much all scenarios, and it can hit uh, bulky grasses that would have potentially walled it as well. So um, I like the, uh, the addition of Megahorn. I do have Hoopa on the team already to break Psychics for it, so it doesn't really need to be that thing. And it would be nice if it was probably a pivot instead, uh, but it was another free pick for me, and it was another cheap tier 1. It was a 160 point tier 1, it was a tier 1B, so I've paid lower for the tier 1s than I needed to. At this point, I still need another tier 3, I still need a tier 5, I still need my Mega, uh, and then two more free picks. But I've got tons of points, I know I'm getting at least 20 more, so I have 340 points to work with. And let's see what is next here. I've got the Superior. So, okay, so Superior was actually 80 points in Tier 3. It lost Hidden Power, and I think that's it. Uh, that should be all that it lost was Hidden Power. I, I don't know if 40 points for Hidden Power was the right call or not. I'm thinking it should have maybe been Tier 3A. Maybe? Um, I do think that it probably just boosts on a lot of stuff. It fit well into the speed tiering along with Tracheon between what I want, uh, between like Crobat and Superior, there isn't a ton of stuff that fits in there that I would really care about. So that was fine. Um, but between Crobat and Tracheon is a little bit too much. So uh, this fits in between like the Lele and Crobat speed tiers that would be really obnoxious otherwise. Um, Glare is just like super broken. I think that 100% paralysis moves are possibly my favorite thing ever just because of how much I love paralyzing things. You know, it's a defogger as well on the team, which which helps out against like toxic spikes, which are actually pretty annoying for the team. But I'll patch that up in a second. So uh, defogger, speed tier, glare, which again is super helpful, especially for things like Lele and Hoopa that aren't necessarily the fastest things. Um, just in terms of outspeeding certain threats, they just sort of fall a little bit short. So uh, glare support definitely helps out in terms of that. I valued superior very highly when it was in tier two and i don't think that losing hidden power was that big of a problem as long as you can break steel types uh, and flying types which terrakion does both of so synergistically this really did fit well on the team uh, it was a way to break bulky waters which i know you see the stats on the side there you're like oh how does this break bulky water well leaf storm is broken and contrary leaf storm is even more broken so I can definitely break bulky waters. I believe I pick up an electric at some point. Ugh. Did I pick up an electric? Let me just double check here for myself. <laughs> yeah, I do. Okay, well, <laughs> yeah, that's not the best bulky water breaker. But besides the point, Superior is going to take that load probably a little bit more. That's why I like Superior so much. And it filled up the Tier 3 that I wanted, Tier 3 slot that I wanted. And I actually gained, in quote, gained in quotations, points, um, because I didn't take the higher value tier three here and I took a lower value tier three. Uh, just I just thought this was also a steal. So it was kind of a draft of seals. I thought about taking a Moongus instead and paying the extra 20 points for Moongus. Kind of didn't do the same thing. It can 1v1 waters, but it can't really like kill the other waters necessarily. And I already had an idea for another grounded poison that I wanted, which was Mega Beedrill. So I got some points back for taking Mega Beedrill. Uh, it didn't lose anything to my knowledge in this new generation it's still just as powerful uh just as powerful of a pivot as it was in the previous generations that's why i like it so much i know it's doubling up on poison but it's a grounded poison and crobat doesn't really use the poison typing besides defensively i think of it more of a flying type than a poison type so in my mind beedrill was really solid here because it gave me t spikes i think t spike support plus glare support for flying for flying types i guess just like the idea of having both of them on the team i guess is what i'm trying to get away obviously i'm not gonna glare and have t-spikes up like that's not feasible necessarily all the time but um t-spikes with the breakers that i have and the potential for cleaning with like scarf terrakion scarf hoopa scarf lele sm shell smash blast away scarf serp things of that nature um i just think opened up a lot here for the team i really liked how it was coming together and I thought the Beedrill was just a really strong way to threaten something out or pivot on a seal type into something that could deal with it later, uh, such as Blastoise Shell Smashing on it, things like that. So I really like the Beedrill pick, and I like that it was going to give me points. Um, sometimes you'll see Beedrill 
as like a tier 1B. Like, I feel like it might have the value of a tier 1B in, in this draft, but um, it's not that strong when it's not using like Poison Jab or U-Turn. So sort of thinking about it that way, it's a little bit different as well. I really like the B drill though. I've been looking at it for a while. I decided to opt out of opt out of the Houndoom because I had uh, a plan for my final three picks and I had a better fire type that I was looking at grabbing. And there was only one other person who could grab it for me. So I took it earlier than I wanted to. I don't know if I grabbed it round nine, did I? I did actually grab it right now. So I, I took Victini as my second last free pick. And then I sort of limited myself to two tier fives or a tier four and a tier five B. Um, and forcing myself into a tier 5B for my tier 5, which was kind of eh, because tier 5B is like pretty bad, um, and tier 5A is like kind of okay. Um, I don't have a lot of problems with most of tier 5A. So, like some of those are pretty decent mods in draft. So anyways, I limited myself a little bit on that, but Victini is just such a good breaker. I, I, I couldn't pass this up. I, my options were either Blacephalon or Victini, and Blacephalon actually went after me. Uh, I thought that Butterfree might have been looking at either this or Blacephalon, and either way, I was weaker to Ghost, but my other Psychic types aren't weak to Dark, so I found that tripling up on Psychic with my Fire wasn't the worst thing in the world. It probably could have been better if I had taken Blacephalon, but Victini is a little bit better of a Breaker, and it's another Pivot. That was kind of important to me, was getting another U-Turner. Um, and round nine Victini is just so good. Like I, I'm surprised that it lasted this long, but obviously people don't have enough points to grab it or it doesn't fit into their draft plans well or things like that. But uh, I definitely valued Victini a lot here. It's a great mixed attacker, sort of goes along the lines of a hoop unbound in terms of that. And it's again, it's a good pivot that threatens things out. It brings in bulky waters, which I'm kind of iffy on with this team. It's probably the biggest weakness of this team is that it's definitely going to be on superior shoulders to kill bulky waters for most of my matches um, but besides that it's super good it does have a reliable way to hit bulky waters and things like bold strike and thunder so it's not the worst thing in the world and the base 100 speed fits in between Lele and tracheon my upper speed tiers are really good i have between 80 and 145 pretty much covered and then it was just below that that i was looking to sort of fix I didn't have an electric community yet, so I knew I wanted a ground type, and I didn't have an electric type yet, which was really important for the team, because I just don't, I, I can't only rely on SERP. So I was looking at a ground type and an electric type to finish up my draft, and I ended up going with the ground type first. I grabbed Mudsdale in round 10. This was a tier 5A Pokemon. I think it's probably tier 4 value usually. Uh, I definitely value this higher than maybe some people do. Because I like how reliable it is at setting rocks. So it's another rock setter on the team. It's the most reliable rock setter on the team. It can come pretty much every week. And it can set rocks pretty much every week. It's a super good defensive wall. It gets body press now with stamina. Which is just insane. Um, like you probably don't even need earthquake to hit other uh, to hit anything else. Besides the fact that it's stab. Because body press with stamina is just so good. That's pretty much all I took myself for though. It, it's a ground type. It gets rocks. End of story. And then last but not least, I took my mascot, which we had last season in Weedle, and that is Lantern. So I'm iffy on this. I don't actually know if I get all of the abilities or not, because Water Absorb isn't actually obtainable. Uh, Lantern is a National Dex Pokemon, I, I think. Let me look this up actually really quickly here. Lantern. I'm losing my voice. Holy crap. I haven't recorded in so long. Swish. Lantern. It's not, actually. It's not a National Dex Pokemon, but you cannot find it in raids. And that looks like... Wait, you can. It's in max raid battles. How come you can't get Water Absorb? They must just have not released Water Absorb yet. It's super strange to me that, like, Showdown has Water Absorb, like, marked through. But anyways, I'm not sure if you can get Water Absorb on Lantern or not. But it's an electric type and an electric type immunity. So picking up two more electric communities for Blastoise at the end. I don't really care about the water typing on Lantern. Again, this is my electric, so it doesn't really kill waters any better than it could. I could have taken, like, Electivire and done the same thing. Uh, but I liked Lantern's bulk, uh, because when you look at it from an outsider perspective, the team is very breaker-heavy. Um, it's definitely more offensive of a draft than I probably would have liked. And I did have to dig into Tier 5 for a lot of the bulk. Some mons have more bulk just naturally. 
Mons like Blastoise are fairly bulky naturally. Mons like uh, Lele and Hoopa are good, specially bulky. Mons like Mudsdale are good, physically bulky. Superior's kind of middling. Crobat's kind of middling. Victini's kind of middling in terms of bulk. So, you know, it's not like my team is like super squish, like. Zygarde 10% or Kartana, like the entire team way through. It's in the middle. I wrapped it up with a nice bow with some bulk and I like where it's going to take me. Using all of my points was pretty important to me as well. Um, and I managed to grab two tier 5 A's instead of a tier 4 and a tier 5 B. Tier 4 wasn't looking super great. Uh, my other my options for electrics were like Electivire or Boltund. Um, I don't really think Bolton's that great. I was kind of looking at Rona Mo, but I already had a grass, and then Aaron took it anyway, so it didn't really matter to me. Because uh, tier four Rona Mo is kind of yikes. It, like it gets Nasty Plot now, and Nasty Plot Leaf Storm is a really good combination. Uh, just like Nasty Plot Overheat, that's why people are sort of valuing Rona Heat and Rona Mo more, um, because just the combination of Nasty Plot and their unique Rotom Rotom moves, like Leaf Storm Overheat, Hydro Pump, Blizzard, Air Slash, whatever. With Overheat and Leaf Storm, they make the best use of new access to Nasty Plot. Um, and so I just think that Rotom Mo should probably be valued a little bit higher than Tier 4. Uh, yeah, so like Electivire, Bolton, Raichu, Alolan Raichu were kind of like my electric options. And Sunfisk, <laughs> which is just a yikes. So, uh, and Jolteon, which is just complete shit now. So I went with the Lantern instead because I liked Lantern and I wanted to pick up the mascot anyways. It gave me more bulk than all of those combined. So that was the team. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. I'm really looking forward to bringing you guys Hive Cocoon of the season. I want you guys to come in with lower expectations. I'm, I don't, like I have faith in myself obviously as a battler and I've definitely improved over the last few months and I'm killing it in Gen 8 right now. Let me tell you, I am absolutely killing it in Gen 8. The problem is I'm not confident in my abilities against better players. I've been killing it in Gen 8 against players that I know are worse than me. <laughs> and that sounds so awful to say, but players that I know, no, I can't describe it any other way. They're worse than me. Uh, like, I'll be completely honest. I'm winning most of these games off of pure skill and matchup advantage. I haven't really fallen into a place where I'm at a matchup disadvantage because I'm just drafting better and people don't really know what the new mons do yet. And I'm sort of limiting myself to like one or two new mons and going with mostly stuff from Gen 7. For example, this draft, I only have Duraludon from Gen 8. There's no, like, new toy syndrome here. It's just the one Mon. So, depending on how that goes, we'll sort of see how the season goes. It's only 10 weeks. Fingers crossed we make playoffs. That would be the overall goal, of course, Was would be to make playoffs. And then if I do make playoffs, the goal would be definitely to promote and make Beedrill. But there's a lot of competition here. So, my main goal is kind of to not relegate. To finish above the bottom four so like 12th or higher i would be perfectly happy with uh just to stay in kakuna i don't really want to go back to weedle because i feel like if i go back to weedle i'll play really really well and be stuck in this endless cycle of like bouncing between weedle and kakuna which is not what i want to do so that's where my head's at and i'm absolutely losing my voice and i still have my mwpa draft analysis to do so anyways hopefully you guys enjoyed and i will catch you guys for this upcoming hive season